Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube and welcome to another edition of my videos. Today I wanted to uh, show you a recent game that I played in a, uh, in a, in a tournament uh, that I played up in North Wales uh, this past weekend. So this was a game that was played in the fourth round. Um, at this point I'd managed to uh, win my first game but then lost my second one. So I was kind of roughly in maybe sort of coming third potentially or or getting some sort of grading prize if I won this game. Um, it was a really interesting game. Um, I've titled this video as uh, when sharp positions go uh, horribly wrong and uh, you'll see why in uh, just a minute. Um, so my opponent very quickly, he is a very strong player. In fact he was the number one seed in this uh, particular tournament. Um, his rating was just under 1900 FIDE but his English rating was 181 which is actually probably higher if you converted that to FIDE that's somewhere around I think 2000 or something so uh, definitely underrated on his uh, FIDE rating um, so uh, funny enough the guy I did play I actually did know very well uh, he uh, Funny enough, was at the same university as me, and uh, although he was much older than me, I think maybe about five or six years older. Uh, at the time when I met him, he had just finished his PhD, so um, eh, definitely quite a smart person, very, very intelligent. Uh, currently, I think, doing a research fellowship somewhere in, uh, in Warwick somewhere, so uh, definitely doing all that means he has a ton of time for chess, and it does show because his. Uh, Rating over the past few years has gone up by, certainly his ECF has gone up by about 35 or so. So um, definitely really strong. It's funny, funny I, you know, I say these things because uh, um, the last time I played him properly I was maybe rated about 1400. So I'm now about 1700. So you know there's, there's a big difference between him and you know him then and me now and uh, it was it was my hope that maybe I might try and win win this game and maybe show him that I've, I've improved so much but uh, we'll see. Anyway so the position started with e4 so I was playing white just very quickly. He went e5 and um, and here I have a, an opening setup that I, I like to get into and it starts with the move d4 and the point of this is I can basically transpose into a scotch game without the risk of going into um, some of the Italian positions um, so I should say not even the Italian positions um, I mean more the uh, the weird gambit lines you get like the Latvian gambits uh, the Philidor also avoids that as well and also the Petrov as well I'll show you why if let's say I do knight here first he can now get into his Petrov setup um, which is uh, you know you need to know something against that and also d6 as well um, but playing d4 immediately, um, he can't really play this move now. Um, if, let's say, he does it straight away, then we just capture here. And after the capture, um, this is quite good for white. Um, this kind of this uh, this this knight's not really going anywhere particularly good. He'd come over to c5, I suppose. Um, but then you could probably sack this bishop if you wanted to. White's doing quite well here, a lot of pieces developed, although he's given up the bishop pair. He's, he's got complete control over the centre, um, pieces developed, so looking pretty good. Um, but let's go back. Um, so I just wanted, so that kind of avoids that line, and also after, if he does capture, if I go back just one move, if he captures, and after knight's f3, if he then plays uh, knight f6 now, similar things again, we've got that pawn push, and in fact, actually, we can capture here, and um, this is quite quite risky for this bit for this uh, this knight. Now, you have to play moves like d5, try and get the uh, the knight out of the way. But again, we've got a similar uh, position here. We've got a lot of control over the central squares. Okay, we're going to lose a tempo with this uh, queen at some point, with a knight coming to c6. But this is also quite a comfortable position for white. Um, and really he's kind of forced to take, he can, last sort of little try he can do, he could play d6. Uh, again, this is playable for black, but I've never said, I never think I'm particularly happy with this uh, line. And so now he's got to do something about this uh, this pawn now. Play moves at f6, but it's a symmetrical position, I'm just up a tempo, and um, his, uh, his king can't castle, so it's got to be good for white, or at least slightly good for white anyway. So really there's no, so he has to kind of take here and um, there's a lot of a lot of lines he was kind of thinking I was going to play for some crazy sort of uh, 
Danish Gambit stuff or even uh, Queen takes on uh, D4, which is also a, a playable line known as the center game. Uh, but here I now play Knight to F3, and after C6, we've actually transposed into a common line in the Scotch now. And typically here, the main line move is to capture with the knights, and we'll just get into our normal Scotch position. But here I decide to play uh, Bishop to C4, and this uh, now is transposed into the Scotch Gambit. After uh, his knight came to uh, f6, in fact I've, I've kind of got the removal order wrong here on here, but it's, he did bishop c5 which is also um, very similar. I then castled and then knight to f6 and weirdly now we've got a transposition here after the move e5. We're now into unfamiliar, in unfamiliar territory uh, into something known as the max lunge attack, a very powerful opening system for white and uh, things can go horribly wrong in this position because it's so sharp it, if I'm being honest with you it's probably the sharpest position out there um, if one player makes a small inaccuracy or a small mistake it lights out for the opposition and you'll see in this game um, there is a couple mistakes that both of us make and um, you'll see how this game really hangs in the balance quite a lot so um, he played the move d5. Uh, interestingly enough, after this capture here and this capture, and then rook to e1, um, he fought quite a long time here. Um, he didn't really know the main line after uh, the d5 move. He was kind of just sort of knew it was probably slightly good for black. It's debatable. It's about maybe equal if black knows what he's doing. Um, but for the most part, it's a very unclear position, as we'll see very soon. Um, so here d5 has to be played. If I just go back one move, he can play knights to g4, which is probably the only other move, but it's not particularly good. As now bishop comes to f4, and after a move like castles, we play the move h6, and now this uh, this knight has really no squares to go to. Uh, this pawn is well defended, can't come back to uh, f6, so it has to come back to h6, and after bishop captures g captures and queen to g2 we have got quite a precarious position for black his king is uh, position has been opened up quite a lot this queen is now attacking this h pawn it's uh, quite a difficult position for black to defend uh, although it's relatively playable though although I wouldn't say it's particularly any good for black so going back so there's no real other good moves here that black can play he could go back to knight to g8 but again this is just losing a tempo so this, this can't be a good move uh, and uh, here I think white can just continue um, opening up the position really uh, creating a powerful attack he's now threatening ideas such as uh, bishop takes on f7 um, so just immediately putting uh, capturing then the uh, the bishop after the queen comes here um, so really really powerful stuff that black will have to try and deal with um, so going back then after e5 so that's why d d4 is is the move oh one last thing to show you actually is after um, the knight comes to e4 this is also a big big bit of a mistake as well um, rook to e1 is powerful now you can see here that this knight has no good squares to go to there is one interesting line after the knight captures here and d3 but it doesn't really work very well um, black kind of salvages maybe a semi-playable position, but nothing too much. In fact, queen e2 is probably even stronger here, as now that threat has disappeared uh, somewhat. You can still capture, uh, but after queen takes, now this threat doesn't work anymore as the queen just captures. So, uh, even more powerful. So, going back. So that's why d5 after e4, e5, sorry, d5 was played. After captures, captures rook to e1. Okay, so this is a really interesting idea. So there is pretty much only one move black can play here and that's bishop to e6. Um, there really isn't anything else he can do. He can play king to f8 which is playable um, but now 
Black has to weather quite a uh, heavy storm. The first problem with this move is obviously he's no longer castled. This rook is now going to be out of the game for quite some time. In fact, it might not ever reach the, the position. Uh, so white's kind of play black is playing down almost a whole major piece here. Um, so the key move here is bishop to g5. And uh, this now has the threat of capturing this pawn and then also attacking this queen here. So um, if let's say it captures, which is one of the moves, we've now got this position and now a really nice move by white that can play knight to f c3 and if there's ever a capture here we've got this um, very delicious uh, back row mate here. Um, so really powerful stuff. Um, so there's a lot of complications in this line and uh, it's not, I would say, particularly good for uh, black to get into this. It's just going to create a lot of unnecessary complications that white is going to pretty much come out on top in most lines. So that's why rookie for bishop e6. But now queen to g5 and this is a really tough move to defend. As now um, there's really only one move black can play. Um, if he just goes for a standard move. So just let you know the threat here is obviously this knight is going to capture this bishop. And after capture back we then capture the rook with a check. So that's the threat. So how does black defend it? If let's say he castles, let's look at the first idea, then we can open up the position quite easily. We just do this to rook e8, queen h5. This is just too powerful. Okay this uh, bishop can come here but now this is lost. Um, you can't defend both those squares at once if we go back. Um, so that doesn't work. Going back. So another idea could be his queen could capture this pawn on f6, but here this also loses. Now after queen captures, f captures, we now have this lovely fork, which is forking both the king and the bishop. So really powerful stuff. So keep that in mind. That's why also this move also fails. Same idea. We capture here, capture, and then that. So that's why in this position, queen has to come to d5. So the only move in this position that um, keeps the position in check. And now again, we've got a lovely little move, very similar to the ideas I showed you, another variation, this knight coming to c3, really strong. So now obviously this capture can never occur, as this queen is pinned. Um, so I'll just show you very quickly now, this bishop is now pinned to the king. You can see here, that's really, really powerful stuff. So that's why, only move, once again, queen to f5. So keep in hold of that bishop just for the time being. And now knight came to c4. And uh, black for just a moment can pause and sort of keep, get his breath for a moment. And here the main line which he did find, I mean it did take him quite a long long time to find it, was castle long. Um, so now we reach quite a critical position in the game. Um, here I played the move g4 which is the main line move. And again, it has sort of has a lot of traps involved in this line. Um, if let's say he comes to g6, he has now relinquished his defence on c5. So we could just capture here, and after uh, so a few exchanges, this is all doing very well for for White here. He's up a whole piece. Um, his position is going to just hold itself. He just needs to obviously make sure he looks after this pawn on g4 uh, and he's doing absolutely fine. So going back then. So that's why the move he has to play and it looks very very bizarre is um, queen to e5. So it really looks a really weird move to find as uh, it looks as though this has all these sort of a discovered attacks. Uh, in the actual game, he played the move d5. And here, this was actually a complete blunder. As you can see on the, the monitor here, uh, white is completely winning in this position. So, in the game, I played f takes on g7. 
And now this rook has to react to this threat, but he's also got to keep in mind that there's also this threat of the knight coming into f6. Um, he does play to g8 anyway, and I then play to f6. And here, black is losing completely. He played the move d6, but I made a mistake here, and I didn't find the uh, the winning continuation. In the position, as you can see here, I should have played the move g to e4, um, which would have completely won it, and I'll show you why now. So, there's really no moves that uh, white can do in this position. If, let's say, he comes to e5, I'll show you the first line. Then we've got the powerful move f4, and as you can see here, Black can maybe try and play d3 to create a little um, little escape route for the queen. Um, but after king to g2, there's no hope here now, as now the queen will come to d d4, and uh, c3 wins the game. You can see here now that this this queen is completely trapped. It has no other squares to go to. So quite quite a beautiful uh, position um, for uh, for white. Uh, quite a nice little position to look at. Um, this has been played a number of times, fully enough, looking at the top. This is the Lee Chess top games. I mean, like 2100s have fallen for this. You know, and this, again, this is a player here, about 2000 fell for this trap. But he was lucky I didn't didn't see it <laughs> just in time. So instead, I played the move uh, Knight here. And this was, uh, well, it's a blunder, obviously. But it's weird because it goes back into the main line, um, which is queen to e5 and now this goes back into the main line now um, but very quickly I did also want to look at if he went to queen to e7 here now I can capture this rook after the capture here bishop to g5 is sufficient I think here and uh, now this uh, queen has very limited squares to go to it could come to d7 um, but now it's relinquished its defence away from this bishop here. Any other square it goes to, it can no longer defend the bishop on c5. Um, you could try f6 for the moment, but again, nothing nothing changes here. He can't keep hold of this bishop here. Try one last try to maybe capture this bishop on here. But after capture, he captures back, capture the bishop. You can see now that um, white is still up massively in this position. So, really interesting stuff. Again, that's been reached a number of times in matches. Have a look at the uh, positions yourself when uh, when you get some time. So, in the game, after this, I then tried to repeat the position. Um, keep in mind, I was actually in, uh, seriously hung over in this position. Um, <laughs> I was uh, I was a bit worse where I've been out the night before, so I kind of wouldn't mind him get just offering a draw, and maybe he would he would fall for it if he went back and forth. Uh, but he didn't. He went back into the main line with uh, e5. And here, um, I, I couldn't remember what the next move was. Um, this is maybe one of the issues, as I say, with playing such sharp positions. You need to know what the follow-up is if black uh, is able to parry all the threats. Um, the main move here is actually captures here and after F, F captures you hold on to this pawn with H6 and it's quite an unclear position. Um, white has obviously got the trade-off of obviously he's got this pawn on G7 which could look to promote at any point if this rook goes away. These two pieces keep this rook at bay as well so you could maybe argue that um, you know we're we're controlling a rook with just a bishop, which is, I guess, kind of good. Um, but then black also equally gets quite a lot of um, things as well in this position. He's he's clearly got much more activity, I would say, in his pieces. They're all developed really nicely. White's got a weak queen, king side, and um, you know this is quite a, an intimidating pawn center. Although black can break it down at any point uh, in the game. But that wasn't played. Instead, I played the move f4. And um, it has been played before, but it, it completely kind of loses, really, after d3 with the check. Um, I really wasn't sure what to do here. So I decided to capture with the knight here on um, on that square. And after the queen captured, I then played bishop to e3. 
but here it's just saying that so you can see with the computer here now that white is completely losing uh, it's about to minus 2.8 so down a whole piece this queen came back to d6 um, I tried to maybe push this bishop off this nice square so it had to come to d5 and then look to break down this center which is what I did um, he now captured the pawn on g7 and I made one kind of last mistake I did, we thought it was a mistake it probably really isn't to be honest with you as the position is quite quite bad already I tried to play the rook to d1 but now he had this nice fret of uh, of e5. It does say it's a mistake here is now there's this idea here coming here but I didn't really like this I mean it doesn't look any good really does it you're trading off a queen but it's it's playable as to what was played in the position so here I I didn't see obviously there's this fret of this knight coming into this square but I obviously thought oh my, 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 my knight's holding that piece so I thought about pinning this knight so if he tried to come over here I can then you know maybe take his rook or something or here. But now he found a really fantastic move. I wonder if you can see it. Uh, rook takes here. Really nice. Really nice move. So, um, and it's completely lost for black. I did try one last trick. I thought maybe he might capture the queen here. So if he captured this queen here, uh, you know, I've got this nice continuation where this uh, queen has to move somewhere. Uh, and after it moves, then maybe I can fight this on. <laughs> but it's not great. Um, but yeah, so I thought it was just a really interesting game. Lots of little traps in the Max Lang. Um, that was the first time I ever played it on the boards. Uh, I want to try and play it again because, you know, it'd be great to get into a mainline position and where we've just got this unclear, unbalanced position that uh, where both players aren't really overly sure what they're doing. Um, you can see here both of us made about a couple of mistakes each. Uh, I just happened to make the last blunder. Or the last mistake, I should say. Um, but there we go. Thank you all for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And hope you too can uh, have some unbalanced games in your position. Take care now. Bye.